Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I designed a box with a sliding panel. Let's go. All right, so here we are in Fusion 360. Uh, my 3D printer is uh, printing at the moment, so hopefully it's not going to be too loud. Uh, yeah, so we're going to design a a square a cube uh, which is uh, actually a, a box uh, with a sliding panel so um, I'm going to show you how I did that there are, I'm sure there are many other ways to do this but uh, that's how I did it um, I'm not going to go over the basis of Fusion 360 there are many tutorials on YouTube for that so um, well if you have uh, any questions if you want to see something just pause the video watch again um, yeah so let's go let's get uh, let's get to it so I'm going to create uh, two components because it's good practice to have components I want to have my box here and I want to have another component which is the um, sliding panel right I'm going to activate um, the, the box I'm going to create a new sketch I'm going to create this on the um, XY axis, right? Now I'm going to create a rectangle, so I hit R on my keyboard and then I go I'm going to select a center rectangle from the sketch palette. I'm going to click in the middle right here on the uh, origin of the plane. I'm going to um, need a, let's say, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters uh, rectangle. So I'm going to type 50 millimeters but then instead of typing 50 millimeters here, I want this to be automatic. I want it to be, uh, I want, if I change the first dimension, I want the second one to change too. So I'm just going to hit enter and you can see that um, uh, it's 28 millimeter here. Uh, there are some uh, graphic glitches because I'm running uh, Fusion 360 on Linux. In uh, I installed uh, Fusion 360 uh, via Lutris, which is a, a um a tool that installs wine the the windows emulator on linux and it works flawlessly except for some minor graphical uh, glitches but uh, otherwise i had i had absolutely no problem with fusion uh the last uh, past month uh, i've been using it so what i want to do i want this to be uh, the same as this uh, dimension here so i'm going to uh, let my cursor on top of this dimension and you can read d2 50 millimeters. D2 is uh, the name of the dimension, so dimension 2. So I'm going to double click on this um, this 28 and I'm going to specify D2 and hit Hunter. And now I have a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter square. If I change the dimension here, I type 60 and I have a, a 60 millimeter by 60 millimeter square. So let's come back to 50. I will hit finish, finish sketch. I'm going to select this profile, hit E on my keyboard for the extrude function. So the profile is already selected. Uh, everything else uh, for the moment I don't change. And here, and for the distance, for the 8 of the cube, I'm also going to type D2 and hit enter. Now if you select this side, this edge here, there you go, and you can see that it says one edge length 50 millimeters. Now if I go back to my sketch and change this dimension to, let's say, 40 and hit finish sketch again, then the cube is now 40 millimeters high. So the three dimensions of this cube are linked together. And let's go back to the sketch and do this, uh, make this a 50 millimeters uh, square and that gives me a 50 millimeter cube. So that's the inside dimension of my box. I want to add uh, around this box 1.6 millimeter in each, each dimension. Why 1.6? That's because I'm going to use four walls to print that. And my um, the extrusion width is 0.4 millimeter. So four times uh, 0.4 is 1.6 millimeter. So I'm going to select this first uh, surface here. I'm going to right click and then select press pull. Now I'm going to select the the other sides and also the bottom side. All right, 
and I'm going to add 1.6 millimeter. Hit OK. And now I'm going to um, select the top side and go to uh, use this shell uh, command. If you don't see it in your toolbar, it's under the modify menu shell. Um, the face is already selected. That's the top face. Um, everything else doesn't, doesn't change. And I will now type 1.6 millimeter. Okay, so if I select this edge here, we can see it's a 50 millimeter edge and build, uh, at the bottom, 50 millimeter edge and also in this direction. So the inside of our box is 50 millimeter by 50 by 50. Now there's a, a little small change I need to do. The bottom uh, part here needs to be 1.8 millimeter because I'm going to use 0.3 millimeters to print and uh, well, 1.6 doesn't divide by 0.3. So I'm going to uh, bump, that, bump that to 1.8 millimeter. To do so, I select the uh, bottom face, right click, select press pull. And here I'm going to select uh, new offset. Make sure it's not on modify existing feature, but to new offset. And I already have 1.6 millimeter. I want, to add uh, I want it to be 1.8, so I add 0 0.2 millimeter. Now if I select this, uh, the bottom face and then the bottom face inside the box it should oh yeah okay so select the bottom face and then control click on the inside face and now you can see at the bottom of the screen it says 1.8 millimeter so we're good and if we check just to be sure on the sides same thing select uh, one side uh, right click on the other one and it's 1.6 millimeter, so everything's good so far. Now I'm going to click the home button to put this uh, in back in position. Now, the sliding uh, panel will be on top, so I need to pull this one down a little bit. I just don't know how much yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the top face, create a new sketch, now I want to project those lines. Right now this sketch is empty, but I want this sketch to have those lines. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard. And I'm going to project this line. And I'm going to project this line, the bottom one here. So I now have this and this on my sketch. Hit OK. I'm going to create one line here and one line here. So let me zoom on this. I'm going to hit, hit L on my keyboard. And I'm going to uh, come here, see that the Fusion 360 snaps the cursor at the end of the line, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to uh, left click on this and pull right down. And you can see also that Fusion 360 snaps on the second line and also adds a perpendicular um, constraint. Uh, you can see the uh, the little blue square. Well, if I move my cursor, you don't see it. No, no, you can see it again. And you can also see that it's 90 degrees. So I click on, on this, and it creates the line. I'm going to go over there, click on this corner, pull down right here. Okay, I can now finish sketch. With this new uh, profile here, I will select it. I will right click again, select press pull once again, and just grab this arrow and pull down. And you can see that um, here, Fusion 360 automatically set the operation to cut because it's uh, going inside an existing uh, body. So, well, I just pull down an arbitrary dimension and hit OK. Right. Now, I'm going to create the um, the part that uh, inside which the uh, sliding panel will uh, well will slide. So I'm going to select this uh, face here and hit uh, create sketch. Okay. Uh, once again, this sketch is empty. I need to project this line here and the one on the other side. But actually, we're not going to do that. We're going to use another technique for that. So I'm going to hit, hit P on my keyboard and I want to project this line. Hit OK. OK, not OK. <laughs> now 
I'm going to create uh, a few lines. So I hit L on my keyboard. I click on this uh, here, which is the end of the line we've projected before. I'm going to uh, draw an horizontal line here. Uh, since there was nothing here, no, no line, no point, nothing, uh, Fusion 360 assumes, and it assumes right, that I want to continue drawing lines. So I'm going to draw another line. I don't really care uh, where it it lands uh, right now. So I'm just going to uh, draw that line here. I'm going to draw uh, a third line like this and a fourth line uh, like this. Okay. And now, <coughs> sorry, now I want to finish my uh, drawing. So I'm going to put my cursor on top of this uh, tick uh, mark here. I'm going to click and that will uh, end the, the drawing. So that's one of the few uh, glitches I talked earlier uh, about Fusion is that you can't see the line right now. But if I go to select, you can actually see that. So yeah, There's, there are a few uh, bugs, graphical bugs on the when you run Fusion 360 on Linux, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's worth doing that, um, especially since I don't have a Windows computer uh, in this house. Right, so now I want to make this a little uh, tighter. So I'm going to hit, hit D on my keyboard for the dimension tool. And I'm going to select this top line here. Um, oh, I had two lines selected, so I'm going to hit Escape and I'm going to hit D again. Yeah, that's much better. Right, if I use that, I'm going to type 1.5 millimeter. Okay, now I also want this point to be on this line. So I'm going to go to the constraint menu and I'm going to choose coincident. I'm going to select this point and then I'm going to select this line and uh, the point is now here. I also want this point to be on this line, so I select the point, I select the line, and it aligns properly. I also want uh, this and this to be perpendicular, so I'm just going to um, hit the uh, select menu, the select button here, I'll select this one, control click this line here, and I'm going to hit the perpendicular constraint here, and there we go. I also want this and this to be perpendicular. So I still have the uh, the tool selected. So I'm going to click on this line and click on this line. Okay. Now there's uh, one more thing to do. I want this to be 45 degrees. So again, I'm going to hit D on my keyboard, select uh, the top line, select the, uh, the this line here, and I want that to be 45 degrees, okay. What else do I need? So this is 45 degrees, this is perpendicular, and this is perpendicular, so that's all good. All I need to do is fix the distance between this point and this line, and I want that to be also 1.5 millimeter. There are probably um, other ways to do this, but um, once again, that's uh, how I did it, so uh, that's how I show it. Now I'm going to hit finish sketch on the, on the toolbar. And then I'm going to select this profile, control click on this other profile here, if I can select it, yes. I'm going to now hit E on my keyboard for extrude. Okay, so on the uh, uh, menu here, uh, I already have two profiles selected. Uh, it starts on from the profile, the direction is one side. The extent, I'm going to change that, and I'm going to ch change that to two object. And I'm going to click on the uh, the this uh, face here, which is the um, the back the in the yeah the back side uh, of the uh, of the box. If I can, yeah, that's the back. That's the inside of the back. And when I do that, uh, Fusion will automatically send uh, this um, this profile, will extrude this profile up to this object. So now I can hit OK. Right. Now, we need to have this, uh, this thing 
on the other side. So I'm going to use the mirror function. So I'm going to create a mirror. I'm going to select the pattern type as features. Okay, what I need is the uh, this extrusion here for my feature. I'm going to use a mirror plane and I'm going to use this, uh, which one is this one? So if you press and hold the left mouse button, it will show you everything you can select. And what I want is this YZ plane. And then I will, uh, yes, compute options, uh, usually it's set to optimize and it didn't work. <laughs> so let's try that again. Create a mirror. We're going to select the feature. The feature we're going to select is this one. The mirror plane is this one. And well, let's say adjust and hit OK. There we go. With adjust, it has worked. It just worked. Right, so now it's time to bring this side back up, but not all the way up. It needs to uh, stop uh, yeah, somewhere here. Yes, that's here. And then the sliding panel will be inside this, uh, this ridge here. So I'm going to left click on this face. Uh, once it's uh, to select it, then right click. Uh, no, not right click, sorry, so escape. I'm going to hit E on my keyboard for extrude. And now I'm going to go on the menu and the extent will also be two object. But now instead of selecting a face, I'm going to select this point here. And since this new extrusion will cross on an existing body, um, Fusion 360 sets the operation to cut, but what I actually want is join and hit OK. And there we have our uh, our box okay now we need to design the sliding panel so it's time to switch component I'm going to go in my uh, in my tree here uh, in my tree I'm going to activate sliding panel and you can see that the uh, the other component the box is now uh, grayed out so I can select faces but any change I will do I will now do in this sliding panel. Okay, so how do I do that? I'm going to uh, select uh, either one, it doesn't matter. Let's say I'm going to select this, this, the, this big surface, this big face here, and create a sketch. I'm going to uh, project elements from the other component. So I want this, I want this, I want this line here, I want this line here, this line here, and well, this line here, it, it goes too far, but uh, it's not a problem. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to finish sketch because we are almost done. I'm going to select this uh, profile we just made, right click on it, select press pull, and then extend to object and click on the bottom here. Hit OK. Hit OK. <laughs> right, but if we print this, uh, let's activate the uh, main component just to uh, have a look at uh, everything. So if we print this, it's not going to slide because of uh, the way 3D printing works and the tolerances in uh, on, on the printers and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do some adjustments. I'm going to add some tolerances. So I'm going to activate the sliding panel again. The first thing I will do is that I will push this uh, front face a little bit inside because if I print this like this, it's going to uh, be a little bit too long and it will uh, uh, get out of, uh, of the box. So you will have to uh, kind of test that with your printers. Um, I find that uh, 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter is enough uh, in, in my case. So I'm going to right click, say press pull, and then you can see the arrow is going outside. I want it to go inside. So I'm going to type minus 0.2 millimeters. 
also we want to push the, those um, those two edges here and also here also to have them inside so that we can have some tolerances so the, the panel can slide so I'm going to select well I'm going to hide the box by clicking on the little eye here and I want this and this so I'm going to control click on this uh, second one so that's an another way to do the um, the uh, press pulls you can either select the first one right click press pull and then select the second one or I hit escape to unselect everything or you can select the first one control click the second one right click press pull that's exactly the same now once again you're gonna have to uh, do some trial and, and error with your printer to see um, uh, what kind of tolerance you want to put there um, also depending on whether you want it to be uh, loose or uh, or, uh, or to kind of resist a little bit so I find that uh, 0 0.2 is a well actually minus 0 0.2 because we can see the arrow the arrow is pointing outwards we want this to go inwards so minus 0 0.2 so that that works fine uh, that gives just enough resistance so that the panel uh, the panel doesn't slide uh, by itself and also it's uh, it doesn't resist too much so I'm going to do that on the other side too click one control click the second one right click select press pull minus 0.2 millimeter okay we're almost done Right, so there's, um, uh, we're almost done. There's a little, uh, two little things uh, that's left to be done here. If we leave this like this, um, there's a chance that it, it won't fit um, here. We need to give a little bit of tolerance uh, here too. So we're going to activate this um, component. I'm going to hide the box. I'm going to select this bottom part and actually let's see if we can also select the top part at the same time. Right click right click and select press pull. Yes, it seems to be working. So uh let's say I don't know, minus point two millimeter. Uh that should be okay. So hopefully now it has yeah, we can see that it has pulled uh well it actually pushed uh, both faces. One last thing, we need to create something to help uh, pulling the uh, the panel out of uh, its position. So we're going to create a sketch on the top face here. So I had the uh, face selected. So once I uh, clicked uh, Create Sketch, Fusion 360 automatically created the sketch on the selected surface. I'm going to hit R on my keyboard and draw an arbitrary uh, rectangle. So let's say... Uh, 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters that's good I want this to be centered so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line so I hit L on my keyboard I want this line to I, I don't want this line to uh, be um, uh, a part of my design I just want it to be a construction line so just uh, used for dimension and positions so I'm going to hit X on my keyboard or I can select the construction icon here I'm going to click on the origin here and I'm going to draw down to um, draw down to nowhere because I haven't projected anything so let, let's hit hit escape let's hit P on the keyboard and project this line here right hit OK again L click on the origin and click you can see now that Fusion uh, snaps the cursor and uh, shows an X. So the, the X means that it's right in the middle of the line at the bottom. Uh, the little uh, square that's on the uh, the right means that it's a perpendicular constraint. Okay. Right, so now I have this, uh, this nice construction line. I can hit the symmetry constraint or in the menu constraint symmetry I will select one side of my rectangle the other side of my rectangle and then the 
construction line I just created, and boom, it's uh, in the middle right here. Now, if I want to, let's say, have this uh, square in the middle of the bottom part of this drawing, I could hit L on my keyboard, and I have the line tool. And if I bring my cursor here, uh, you can see that it's uh, it's uh, uh, it snaps on the line, and once I arrive at the middle of the line. You can't see it because there's a dimension. Let's zoom in. Now there's the uh, the X and the, the triangle, and that means it's right in the middle of the line. So I'm going to dry to dry to draw <laughs> an, an horizontal line here. All right, and I'm going to uh, end the line by clicking on the little tick. And I can also do a symmetry constraint with those two sides of the rectangle and this line. And now this one, this rectangle, is perfectly aligned in the middle of my uh, sketch here and in the middle of the lower part here. That's just if you're like me, if you're a, a symmetry freak. <laughs> <coughs> now you can hit finish sketch. And the last thing that we need to do is select this profile, go to create, revolve, uh, the profile is already selected. We're going to select this edge as the axis. And we're going to type uh, is here minus 4 degrees. So by default, it will be 360. It's minus, minus 4 because I already did this part earlier. So that's what you're going to end up with uh, when you select the revolve for the first time. So what we want, we want actually, so as I already shown, to be uh, minus four, minus three, minus five, it depends. Uh, you, you can uh, experiment with that. And since uh, we were uh, going through an existing part, Fusion 360 had already, had already set the uh, operation to cut. So that's exactly what we wanted. So there we have it. So if I show the box once again and select the main component, which, by the way, I didn't save, which is bad practice. You always want to save your uh, your designs as soon as you start them. And you can see that we have a nice uh, a nice uh, sliding panel on top of a box. All right. Um, now we're going to try something, uh, which is something I haven't done. Uh, a lot. Um, actually, I've, <laughs> I've done this only once. So we're going to try and and uh, make this uh, sliding panel actually slide. Um, now, if I have the, the so I have the um, main component selected, um, still not saved. <laughs> uh, if I click on on this uh, box, for example, uh, uh, but uh, the bottom component, the, the box, uh, right click on it and then move. And you can see that it moves uh, freely in every direction. Uh, this one too. Uh, so we, what we want is just to have the sliding uh, panel slide in uh, in the correct position. So let's click on pos the position menu here and click revert. So everything is back in place. The first thing we need to do uh, is define one of the components that uh, is not going to move. So obviously it's the box, the box needs to stay in place. So we're going to right click in the tree on the uh, box component and click on ground. And now there's a small uh, pin icon here and I can't select and move this component anymore. I can still move this one here. So I'm going to revert its position. Uh, it needed a, a few seconds to do that, I don't know why. Uh, right, so now we're going to create a joint. <coughs> so once again, I'm not going to go over uh, the, 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 the joint feature. Just uh, know that there are two joints, the, the joint and the as-built join. The joint is uh, when you design two parts that are not in their correct position, and the as-built as -built join is when uh, the parts are already in position. So here, I've built, uh, I've designed uh, those two components 
where they, sh they were supposed to be. So I'm going to create an as-built joint. Okay, before I move, uh, I select component, I'm going to select the type of joint here. So by default, it should be on rigid, but what we want, actually, we want this to slide. So we're going to select the slider type. Okay, now we need to select the two components, the ones that uh, are going to move uh, relative to each other. So the, the top is going to move relative to the bottom. And once I, once I have the uh, two components selected, I have the uh, position option that is now available. And I want, if you see the, the, little, har the little arrow here, I want this, I want the, the, com the, sl the sliding panel to slide on this uh, direction. So I'm going to select this line. Uh, and on this line, I guess I have to click another, uh, yes, click another time to define the direction of the movement. Now, if I click OK now, if I right click on the sliding panel, I can only move it on this position. Right, I don't know if there's an option to make it stop there. Um, I haven't investigated uh, more than that. I'm pretty pleased with what uh, what I've done here. So I can now go and position and revert position and I can happily slide my sliding panel here. Right, let's go revert. Okay, let's do one uh, last thing just for fun. We'll right click on the uh, box component and go to appearance and Let's say we're going to add a mate, uh, I don't know, uh, yellow plastic. There we go. So uh, now I can select plastic mate yellow, drag that on the box. And let's say that the sliding panel will be, uh, I don't know, red. Yes. Plastic mate red. And I'm going to drop that here and close. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, uh, maybe uh, drag my panel here and uh, turn that, yeah, like this. Now I'm going to go over uh, the top left of my screen, click there and go to the render workspace. So that's where we're going to see maybe some more glitches uh, in the UX. Uh, I'm going to click on the render button and it says that I need to save my design which I should have done <laughs> uh, earlier so let's put that in my uh, yeah oh, demo projects uh, folder let's um, have call that uh, tutorial box click save so now I'm going to click on the render icon once again um, well, this uh, might uh, have some glitches, but let's let's try that. So, uh, yeah, it has disappeared. I'm going to use the web module. Uh, yeah, let's say 1280 by uh, 1024. That's good. I'm going to use the local renderer, and I'm going to use the uh, final render quality, and click render. And it's going to take a, a few minutes. There it is, it's ready. So I'm going to click here. Uh, I'm going to push that aside. Uh, and I want to uh, download this file. So I'm going to click download. I'm going to go to my uh, documents folder. I have a tutorial folder somewhere. Uh, somewhere, somewhere here. And I'm going to save that as tutorialbox.png and save this. Go to my file manager. And there it is. A nicely rounded box. So that's it uh, for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. And I will see you on another video. Cheers. Bye-bye.